Well, one category at the Emmys that's got us all scratching our heads is the race for Best Drama Supporting Actor. Uh, but we're going to break it down for you. I'm Zach Laws of Gold Derby. Joining me now are Tom O'Brien, Riley Chow, Tony Ruiz, and Amanda Spears. Uh, let's talk about who the nominees are real quick. We've got uh, Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones, joined by Nikolai Coster Waldo from Game of Thrones. We got David Harbour from Stranger Things, Joseph Fiennes in The Handmaid's Tale, Matt Smith in The Crown, and Mandy Patinkin in Homeland. Uh, out of these six, only Mandy Patinkin and David Harbour were nominated last year. Of course, Peter Dinklage is a previous two-time winner, but he was not eligible last year. Uh, five of last year's nominees, including the winner, John Lithgow, are not in this category. So that's why we're kind of scratching our heads a little bit. Uh, but Amanda, you're not. You claim to know exactly who's going to win. So let me ask you first, and then the rest of us will tell you, tell you why you're wrong. Um, <laughs> tell us, Amanda, who's winning? Peter Dinklage. Oh my God, that's who I'm predicting too. Yeah. But why are you good. certain though? Because this category is probably the weakest, the second weakest of, the, of uh, all of the nominees this year. Um, well, it's one of, it's a, okay, this is a weaker field than, than normal, normally we would see in this category. He had a dynamite I still, episode. I still don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great category. Well, I love the nominees, but as far as like, oh my God, this person should win. Oh my God, I want this person to win. I would be okay if some of them won, but I also, you know, I'm, I feel kind of passive about this category overall. I don't have one that I'm like, if this person doesn't win, I swear to God, I'm going to be like, what the hell happened? So personally, I think this is Peter Dinklage. Three-time Emmy winner, here we go. Uh, I love that Costa Waldo got in, but unlike Kit Harrington, he doesn't have the buzz to be a problem for Dinklage. So I think, you know, this is just an easy layup for Game of Thrones. Tony, jump in here. I, I think that, you know, part of the, the, um, conf the confusion over this category, uh, you know, last year we knew for certain that John Lithgow was gonna win, right? Like it was just yeah. kind of a, a done deal. But the field uh, th was very strong. This one right. feels a little like a letdown. So, uh, well, at least they didn't nominate John Voight. So they did have, they did find some strong. He's never going to get there. another award nomination in his life, probably. No. Uh, Tony, um, do you think that this is just default to Peter Dinklage again? Or do you think that they might go for somebody new? Do you think there's somebody who's stronger? I don't know that I necessarily think there's anybody stronger. I just don't necessarily believe that this is a slam dunk for Dinklage. I'm predicting Dinklage, um, but I don't think he's that strong of a front runner. Um, oh, I think he's like an 85% front runner. He, 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 the, the, the problem is, is that vote splitting is definitely a thing, especially in this system. Vote splitting is a thing. And, um, in that scenario, who could possibly come in? The Handmaid's Tale went all out in terms of nominations and uh, Fines could win this. This is the last time they can honor Matt Smith from The Crown. Um, and, uh, you know, I think one of those three could, could take this. I don't think this is nearly as signed and sealed and delivered for Dinklage. Mm -hmm. Riley, what do you think? I mean, I, I think that the uh, Gold Derby front runner right now is still David Harbour. Is that correct? Do you think that's, or, or are they just predicting him because he's, you know, kind of, you know, well liked and he got nominated last year? Or, I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's a bit of both. I mean, he is kind of the default since he was nominated last year, but he did also win the Critics' Choice. So he has that behind him. And I think he also has become the face of the show in a way that he wasn't when it started. I think it started out as the Winona Ryder show. Then she got snubbed at the Emmys and it was kind of the Millie Bobby Brown show. And now it's come around to him where he's actually the first one to have won an award for his performance on the show. And he, always, he still has all that goodwill from his SAG speech. And uh, I, yeah, I, I think this category is actually maybe the most open in the uh, primetime ceremony. But I have Peter Dinklage in fifth. Uh, I think that the only person who can't win is Nikolai Kostrovaldo because he'll split votes with Peter Dinklage. I ran a poll in the forum, uh, which has gotten 50 votes so far. Which one would you choose out of those two? And 64% said Nikolai Kostrovaldo. So at least 
in the forum, you know, there would be vote splitting if we had the same nominees. And uh, I don't have Peter Dinklage any higher than fifth because I don't think that Game of Thrones has passion this year. I think that, you know, I, I think he'll win again next year as kind of like a Maggie Smith, you know, goodbye hug. But I, I think there's not really any reason to award um, Game of Thrones in some of these categories this year. I could see Mandy Patinkin. I've got him third uh, just because I think that when the show started, I think he still had maybe kind of a bad reputation uh, and that might've cost him a few nominations. I think at this point, he's become more of a leader in the acting community and he's seen as kind of a veteran. Uh, I would have him maybe even higher if I weren't predicting Ephraim Abraham, but I can't predict Homeland to win two Emmys for season seven because that is absurd. I've got uh, Matt Smith in fourth. Uh, he seems to be the one who's doing the most campaigning. And I've got Joseph Fiennes in second, just because last year with like Laura Dern and Alexander Skarsgård, it seems like a sweep really is possible. And you know, The Hammond's Tale has never lost an acting Emmy except to itself. And he, you know, he's playing another one of these abusive roles, just like Alexander Skarsgård. And I think it also helps that he was kind of trashing the writing, maybe unintentionally, but there's that whole story about how he talked the writers out of throwing in another rape. Who do you have um, in first? I, I missed that, Riley. It, yeah. I'm I sorry. I think the thing that, like, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Let me get oh, I, Tom O'Brien in here first. Um, sorry. For, that's okay. No, Tom O'Brien, help us uh, help us clarify this. Um, what do you think? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at Amanda and knowing that the steam is going to come out of her ears <laughs> when I say I think that Joseph Fiennes is going to win. <sighs> I knew it. Like, I, <laughs> Make the I hate the character so much. I can't. I just can't distinguish. I, him I know you. 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 You've talked to me about how the dastardly things you want to do to his character, and I get it. But nonetheless, we've got. Uh, I don't know how much split there's going to be between Dinklage and Costa Waldo. Um, I suspect that Dinklage will get the lion's share of the game's vote. But I, there is a place now for Handmaid's fans to go in the male category. And um, considering the other nominees, I think Mandy is done. Um, and David Harbour is very likable and he's really working the room. Um, but uh, I don't know. And Matt Smith is actually very, very good in The Crown. But there's something about Fiennes' character that draws me to that place. <laughs> I don't know that personally, but he, he really, uh, is is brings a bit of menace to uh, if we need it anymore to handmaids that I think really uh, is is very special and unique to the series and I think he's going to win. I agree with you, Tom O'Brien. Um, not because I found myself uh, identifying with the character by any means, but I think I hope that, not. Good no. <laughs> I think that um, there's. It, it, it's a real compliment to Joseph Fiennes' ability as an actor. This is somebody who we should say, I mean, he's pretty much been forgotten about for almost 20 years. I mean, this guy had a really great start. He had, a he had one great year. He had a great start in Shakespeare in Love. This guy could have been- And, the, and wow. he was in Elizabeth too. Yes, Don't that's forget. true, that's yeah. true. And people just Sorry. sort of forgot. I had forgotten about the guy until, you know, he came on in The Handmaid's Tale, and- You don't remember he's... him playing Michael Jackson? <laughs> I remember, now I remember that. <laughs> what about Flash Forward? <laughs> but um, I mean, I, he really has gotten, it, it, he's, I think actors can appreciate the fact that, you know, this guy, after all these years, finally got a role that really challenged him. And, uh, he really has has done a lot with it, you know? I mean, he's he's really, he doesn't try to make this guy, you know, he doesn't try to excuse this guy's actions by any means. Yeah. He brings I just find touch. that his character is so one note. It's, it's there's just. Oh. See, now I, I, I think, don't think so. There's, there's those moments where he, you know, like when they're playing Scrabble and you think that he's got some humanity, right? I think that 
certainly towards the That's end of the season show. One. We're talking I know. I, 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 well, we're talking about we're talking about know. serialized television these days, so it's all about an arc, you know. No, That's and I I agree. And you know, to his credit, it, he's had to live in his brother's shadow. I mean, his brother is twice talented, more talented than he is. I mean, in fairness. But uh, I, you know, I think there's something about Matt Smith. I think the way he handled that pay discrepancy by keeping his mouth shut was the smart decision. Um, and I think you guys are forgetting Peter Dinklage has had a pretty good year. I mean, he was in three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. He had three SAG award nominations. I don't know if it's so much Game of Thrones winning as much as it's Peter Dinklage. And I think the difference between Dinklage versus Coaster Waldo and Dinklage versus Harrington is Harrington was the story of that season. The minute he woke up, we all kind of knew he was going to be an Emmy nominee. Yeah. So I, I think the fact is, and I love that Coaster Waldo got in, he's not going to be a problem for Dinklage. No, no. Well, I mean, yes and no, because, I mean, it might be that, um, you know, there's this, there's enough people who are happy to see him in there that, you know, or enough people who maybe wanted to vote for him in the past, but, you know, haven't had the opportunity to yet. We don't know, right? Game of Thrones has not won an acting award outside of Peter Dinklage. And so that, you know, makes it difficult to predict anybody else, you know, well, uh, even you know, all those Diana years. If finally wins, then I would check where you put Dinklage. I'm just saying, Riley, like you, you it mean, might be time. she finally wins. <laughs> I'm just saying, if she finally wins, you know, it, it might be time to go back in the predictions and like move them up to your top three or two at least. Like, I don't think, I mean, look, we, I, I've said this on several videos. I'd never put it past um, Emmy voters to just kind of default to what they are familiar with. So, you know, Dinklage, I, I think it would not surprise me. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, Riley's point about the passion of, of for Game of Thrones, it might not necessarily, you know, it got all those nominations, so I'm not going to say that they've totally forgotten about it, but you know, uh, th there might be a sense of been there, done that. People eventually stop winning unless your name is Julia Louis-Dreyfus. So. Yeah, there's, there's some inertia, uh, but I can't remember anything that Tyrion has done like in the last three seasons. I think I whatever inertia <laughs> oh, he I had, think that final I would, episode would have worn off right now. Where he's, you know, holding court and then he's got that face off with Lita Hetty. You know, it, it's beautiful. It's a very well acted 45 minutes of him. And you know, was that it, long? That was yeah, a, I mean, was that a five hour episode? I can't remember. It was like a 90 minute episode. <laughs> it was like a 90, 88 minute episode of it. I know. Of it. And you know, and, and Coaster Waldo's episode, while it doesn't feature a lot of him, and you know, episodes might not matter, he's still pretty good in that. Even just watching his brother about to get blown up by Daenerys, and he's rooting for him to turn and like, go the other way you're like oh of course he's kind of like the viewer in that we're like don't go towards the dragon you moron but i think if i were going off episode and i can't believe i'm going to say this i would give it to matt smith well matt smith uh you know i think that season finale and that scene where he's on his knees with her his head in her lap is so lovely to see him finally decide that he's gonna he's gonna do his role and be her partner and support her is just what everyone wants out of a guy this year with all these scumbags. Well, speaking of scumbags, I mean, what do you guys think to that? Does Matt Smith... Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Does Matt Smith actually have a chance? I mean, because The Crown, we should note, it did double in acting nominations. It did. And no one, even when all those five men were out, had him in there. So what do you guys think? We thought maybe Costa Waldo maybe finds, but you know, Matt Smith surprised all of us with getting in. I'll, yeah. I'll stop. I'm sorry. Well, he had a much. That was my favorite show. He had a much, he had a much uh, bigger role this season. Um, and more uh, certainly, and Amanda's exactly right. That, that, that final episode is a stellar 
uh, showcase for him. The, 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 the challenge with Matt Smith is, you know, the crown aired so long ago. I mean, not, <laughs> not as long ago as, as game of Thrones did, mm -hmm. um, but or stranger things or stranger things for that matter. Um, but this is also the last chance that they can honor Matt Smith. So the fact that he broke through when it was unexpected says maybe there's more support for him than we know. I think there's more support for the crown overall. And it, we'll talk about that in supporting actress and probably. I know. Actress. And it's yeah. just one of those things where like the one de facto for his role, I mean, last year, let's face it, he, they put him in lead because they had Jared Harris and John Lithgow submitted for supporting. They didn't, they just weren't going to submit a third person. I understand why they did it. They put him in the right category this year. And I think it really paid off. And he had a good season where you started off hating him because he's being a jerk and an idiot. And by the end, you're like, oh, he's going to do his job. He's going, he's finally going to listen to his father-in-law <laughs> advice and remember, she's your job. Supporting her is your job and not wanting to be the leader he wanted to be. So I, I just, I really liked it. Uh, Riley, talk a bit more about Mandy Patinkin. Why do you think he's in third? I mean, you mentioned this a little Mandy bit. Mandy Patinkin is think... bribing Riley, that's why. <laughs> no, I, I'm serious though. I mean, what, because we, we did see Ben Mendelsohn win this category um, in a weird kind of upset. Do you, do you think that's part of it? Is it just the fact that the category is so all over the place? Or do you think like, because his season was so good? Well, like his, his season was good, but yeah, it is more because the category is all over the place. And then I think in a race like that, then you can kind of come through just from, you know, a season or sorry, a career's worth of solid work. He and, is all, yeah. no, go ahead. Uh, to Matt Smith, like he's giving a good performance. It's, it's a show that they like. So I don't really have anything uh, negative to say about his chances. I just have other people higher. Well, I'll say it wouldn't surprise me if any of these people won. So why don't we uh, wrap this up by asking for uh, top three contenders ranked. Uh, let me start with you, Amanda. Um, Dinklage. Uh, Harbor, because he's so high in the predictions and I don't like to be too completely nuts and tentatively Matt Smith, but I might if the crown as well, the creative arts move him into second, but we'll talk about my predictions for supporting actors later. Tony? I have Dinklage in first, I have Fines in second, and I have uh, Matt Smith in third. Riley? Harbor, Fines, Patinkin. And Tom O'Brien? Fines, Harbor, Dinklage. And I've got Fines, Dinklage, Harbor, uh, it's odd that Riley's got Patinkin so high, considering he got him kicked out of the Critics' Choice Awards like two years ago. <laughs> That's been. <laughs> if he's threatening you, just give us a gesture. Just give us a nod or a wink so we can tell. Well, you know, there is something to be said that he's the only, I guess, cast member uh, who hasn't won an Emmy of the ones who have been regularly nominated, I suppose. So I don't know. Yeah, that could work in his favor. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if any of these people won. So this is one of the few categories I'm genuinely excited about. Uh, stay tuned for more Emmy updates. Uh, Emmy fans, thank you so much uh, for watching and thank all of you for joining in this lively discussion.